As with many disastrous second dates, the collapse of Donald Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un was made inevitable by the misreading of each other's intentions at their first encounter. Since their initial meeting in Singapore last June, the U.S. president had become fixated on what he saw as a close personal bond with the North Korean dictator half his age. He told his supporters, we fell in love. He wrote me beautiful letters. Those hand-delivered missives appear to have flattered Trump without offering concrete proposals of what Kim was going to do as part of a bargain. A joint statement issued in Singapore stated North Korea's commitment to the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, which Trump appears to have understood as a pledge of complete unilateral nuclear disarmament. In North Korea, however, the phrase is a routine regime slogan that refers to a gradual defusing of tensions on the peninsula and phased multilateral disarmament, during which North Korea would be treated as a nuclear power. For his part, Kim appears to have come away from Singapore interpreting Trump's gushing behavior as sign of a desperation to strike a deal, which would potentially leave most of his arsenal in place, while normalizing relations with the U.S. and lifting sanctions. These wildly different perceptions collided painfully in Hanoi, where the two leaders discovered each other not to be the ideal partner they had previously imagined. It was obvious from the beginning that they would get stuck on the questions of how much denuclearization there should be and how much sanctions relief, said Joseph Yun, former U.S. Special Representative for North Korea Policy now at the U.S. Institute of Peace ThinkTank. Both Kim and Trump are now in a very difficult position. I think Trump now has to realize that complete denuclearization, however charming Kim may be, is not on the cards. Young said that Trump's room for maneuver was constrained by the timing of the summit, coinciding with a furious denunciation by his former lawyer and congressional hearings. The president's embattled position in Washington meant he had to deliver something spectacular in Hanoi or nothing at all, 